Hello and welcome to our next session of our Always On Virtual Series. This virtual series is designed to provide you with thought leadership throughout the year and provide a deep dive into the trends that are transforming the way we do business. Each session, Carousel's own Chief Technology Officer, Jason Vieira, will identify the right mix of topics and speakers to advance your IT strategy and enlighten you on hot button issues and industry trends. Today, we are joined by Carousel's Director of Customer Experience Technology, Pundari Pothini, who will discuss successful implementing digital engagement tools for an omni-channel customer experience. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping items. We have provided our speakers' bios in the top left corner of your screen. In that window, we have provided shortcuts to our speakers' social media pages. We encourage you to take a moment and connect with Pundari and Jason. At the end of today's session, Pundari will address your questions. Please use the Q&A function below the presentation to submit any questions you would like to ask our presenter. If you or a colleague are interested in watching some of our previous Always On sessions, the resource window at the bottom right of your screen will direct you to our on-demand learning page where you can stream all of our past sessions. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Pandari. Thank you, David. Hello, everyone. My name is Pandari Pathini. I'm the Director of Customer Experience for Carousel. Uh, today, the topic is about digital engagement strategy for Omnichannel Contact Center. Um, I've been in the contact center industry for um, over 15 years in, in general software industry for almost 25 years or so. Um, my uh, The topic really, I've, we've been spending a lot of time at Carousel really evaluating a lot of the digital channel enablements, how they're enhancing the contact center and the customer experiences. And then really we look at a lot of customers uh, really trying to strategize how at digital channels, when I say digital channels, what we're talking about is really SMS, chat, those kinds of things, right? So that's that's gonna be the center of our discussion today. That said, um, so I wanna first take a little bit of a step back on you know, how we, uh, where we are today, right? In, in the, uh, especially around the mobile space, digital channel is so much relevant in the mobile space, right? You know, we've, historically transitioned from the mainframe days back in the 50s, right? And then software evolved into a client-server model. We've seen business applications grow from mainframes to uh, either a, a client-based tool or a software sitting on a desktop and then server-based uh, serving, right? And from there, in the late 90s or even early 2000s, right, we started migrating into the web. People are uh, starting to use a lot of the web-based web applications Everything is on the web. There's really no software to be implemented. The reason these are important is they we transition into digital channel enablement for a lot of these applications, right? Especially in the uh, in the 2005 or so, we started seeing a lot of user adoption for uh, uh, in, the, in the mobile space. That's where companies have started investing heavily into like deploying applications for your mobile, you know this app, app for that, app for this. So lo and behold, since 2005, a lot of you know consumers have been you know using a lot of applications, right? It is app for this, app for that. That's the era that we're in right now, is is really a lot of applications on a phone. On average, really, one, one of the public service uh, indicates that people have about 119 apps on their mobile phones, but they only use about five regularly. I did a little bit of count on my phone today, this morning, and I have about 174 apps. I have no clue what they do. I may use a handful, but they're there. That's the kind of uh, state that a consumer space is in. I hear a, a comment that the audio is breaking up. So let me speak closely. So, uh, so app fatigue, right? The, the, w one of the things that uh, what they've been really uh, our industry is going through is the uh, the app fatigue. A lot with the abundance of these apps, people are just not using all the apps. They maybe may, they may download this app once and they don't use it anymore, and they just just really have lost the interest, right? Yet, in the, one of the other important survey that's out there is. 
with the abundance of apps and all of these things on the mobile media, people consuming reviews and, and, and feedback on products, the sales conversions are actually low compared to 17 to 20% of the brick and mortar, right? That's a big number. And, and it's, you know, even though e-commerce has been larger than ever, but the, the conversion rates is, are still at 70 to 20% compared to uh, brick and mortar. That said, I want a quick uh, pause here. I know there's some audio issues, and we also have a poll question coming up. So the poll question is, if your organization has apps built to serve your customers, have you attempted to add more intelligence to them, such as being able to send SMS messages, voice calling capabilities, or even video capabilities? The answers are yes, no, not applicable. I'll give you about 10 to 15 seconds to answer it. Okay, the results are in. So we have about 12.5% that say yes and 62.5% no and 25% not applicable, which is to be expected. A lot, of, a lot of customers aren't really considering adding any intelligence or at least communication enable these apps, right? That's, that's why I felt like that's, this is an important topic to consider is enabling your apps, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next uh, few slides, why that's important. Got one more poll question here. Uh, when it comes to a customer facing apps on, in the mobile space, what's more important to you, right? You know, you can be very descriptive about this. It's a free form text. You could be saying, well, I need to en enable video. I need to en enable SMS. I need to en enable voice calling, whatever that may be. So I'll just give you guys about 15, 20 seconds answer this All right then. So the, the the bottom line is people really don't need more apps, right? As companies, there's a huge investment in the apps that you've already deployed right now. And the the, the, the survey shows and the data, there's enough data out there and evidence out there shows people don't need more apps, right? They just need a way to, you know, a simpler way to get the work done using the apps that they use today, right? Or the websites that they already use. No need to come up with a whole new different application, right? Just enable and make these apps smarter to, to do the work for you know, your customer. So one of the other topics I want to look at is what are your consumers doing on their personal front, right? As enterprises, we, we understand our customer in a certain way, but often we overlook what's happening in, on the personal front. The reason that's important is whatever happens on the personal front sets an, a level of expectation uh, from our consumer on how they consume our products and services, right? So a little bit of a history here as well, a timeline. So, you know, over in 2008, we really started seeing a huge growth in the mobile uh, adoption in the user community, right? People are using a lot more mobile apps, a lot of social media, a lot of video, uh, online media consumption, maps, lot, lots of these mobile consumptions, right? So the consumerization is no longer about bringing your own device and that, that sort of thing, right? It's about how are millennials or even the Generation Z or post-millennials, how do they engage with technology, right? They don't, most of the Generation Zs don't even talk on the phone anymore. They just text messages, right? If you have a teenager in the house, most often, you may have to just text them to get the get the response. If you call them, they probably don't have they don't answer it. They they put it on silent, whatever. And then you'll have the social media, right? The next wave of consumerization: social media, file sharing, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. A lot of consumers are spending a, a lot of time in that. The reason 
I, this is important for us to understand is their experiences that they go through with these applications is what their expectations are from a corporation or an enterprise, right? They're used to a lot of consumer-like messaging, right? Even with Alexa and Siri, a lot of consumers, me inclusive, I'm used to not even touching my device. I just ask Alexa to do certain things, build my shopping list, right? turn my lights off. That's the expectation I have when I pick up the phone and call my customer service. And then I hear, press one for this, press one for that, two for that. There's a huge gap right there on what the consumers are going through and what our enterprises are offering our customers. So how do we, uh, how do we um, uh, circumvent that, right? How do we get past this? So getting it right is the challenge, right? You, you know what a customer is going through at, on the personal front, and then we know what needs to be done. Most businesses understand providing a positive experience is definitely critical, but they really don't know how to get there, right? So we, uh, we you know, kind of boiled that down to three you know, basic principles, right? You know, number one is really the effort required to solve an issue or satisfy an inquiry, right? So how easily it is for our consumer to get the information that they're looking for. Things like, hey, you know, I want to get my, my nearest store, right? Send an SMS uh, or message to my local, uh, my toll-free number, for example. It'll get you the nearest location of their store based on your zip codes. How easily it is to interact with a chat session, for example, or even a, a voice call. When I call in, how easy it is for it to recognize me as their customer and give me the information that I'm looking for. Number two is the knowledge demonstrated by your agent. This is critical. And you know, me inclusive, most people, we've called different call centers and we've been asked the same question over and over several times, right? You, you, you pick your options on your IVR, you go to the agent, the agent is totally oblivious to what you answered at the IVR. So that's, that is not a right customer experience. So the knowledge that we provide to the agent, empower the agent with what the customer is looking for is going to be critical. Number three is the contact choices, right? The choices that we give to our customers to get the, get the service that they need, SMS, voice, chat, whatever the choice it is, we have, whatever the channels that the customer is consuming today, we have to be able to provide those to them. You know, us telling customers to pick up the phone and call all the time may not be very um, a successful uh, endeavor in this today's day and age, right? You've seen what the consumers are doing. So that's going to be key. That's where the digital channel and all the digital media really comes into play is the contact choices. The more choices we can provide, the, the more successful we are. That's it. Uh, it's uh, poll question time. How many times have you contacted a customer service center with products and services you used recently? Choices are zero, you never called anyone once in the last week or two, or two or more. All right, so we have... Uh, about about 15% that said no, and 43% uh, uh, at least once, and then uh, two or more, 43%. So this is this is a typical scenario, right? You know, you call for customer service almost on a regular basis, and me inclusive. I have a classic example that I've done, trying to deal with a laptop manufacturer, trying to get a support. Every time I call, you know, I you know, no matter which time of the day, it'll tell me. There's a 40, to 40 minutes to an hour wait time. And then often when I get through that 45 minutes, my call drops. That is not a great customer experience. Next poll question. If you, if you or will contact a customer service center, what is more important to you, right? Is speed, accuracy, being courteous, or all of the above? So when you answer this, I, I want to put you guys in a, a in a in a con customer shoes, right? Not necessarily a business decision maker. As a customer, what do you, what is it more that's more important to you? Uh, 
uh, that's I expected the uh, all of the above, right? Because that's that's pretty much um, uh, what I would expect from any uh, any customer would expect from us, right? And speed is definitely uh, a, a very important thing, absolutely. And some you know in some business lines, uh, speed is the name of the game. And we'll, we have a, a little bit of a topic in the next slide why speed's important, but accuracy is definitely important. And it's surprising, being courteous is has not been answered. Zero percent, so which is, uh, 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 but I guess you know once you uh, have everything included, I think that that's really a critical thing. So how how are engaged customers driving revenue for us, right? And this one of the things that there's there's a lot of industry stats out there, so I've gathered a, a few just to kind of uh, lay out why it's important uh, for, to have that positive customer experience, right? Customers with positive experience are 90% more likely to make more frequent purchases from your products and services. Five times more likely to choose brands or your brand uh, for future purchases. Seven times more likely to re respond to a brand offers, right? If you've got marketing campaigns that you're sending out to your customers, they're more likely to really respond to these offers. And they're likely to spend 60% or more on each transaction. So there's a lot of... Uh, uh, pull through or upselling opportunities for having a positive customer experience. And there's another key factor that most customers in the retail space especially is the lifetime value, the LTV. So you, you have a three times uh, higher annual LTV if you have that positive customer experience. There's also another stat that says you're 60, uh, six times more likely to try a new product uh, if you have that positive experience, right? There is a Gartner survey that shows brands list losing 38% of customers because they had a poor customer experience. That's huge, right? So, for, uh, so that's really important to consider, having that positive customer experience. There's another uh, common theme that's going on in Gartner. They call it less is more. So what that really means is the ability to provide accurate, personalized experience with the least amount of information. So we're all used to these IVRs or other systems that collect five to ten questions on an average to get to the service that we're looking for. So what they're saying is that less is more. Reduce some of that. Or maybe identify your phone number and maybe identify your first name and last name, right? Get the service that they need with, with the least amount of information. So what can we do now, right? So we, we talked about the, why customer experience is important. And then I also, the Gartner, there's a prediction by Gartner, but by 2022, profitability will replace customer experience as the CMO's number one priority. So the, the reason I want to call that out is, which means CMO is actually, CMOs are spending a lot of money and dollars and revenues in the, in the customer experience space. They're focusing heavily on that. Capitalize that. Take advantage of that because that's a short runway based on Gartner predictions. So build a long-term uh, customer experience strategy, yet achieving some short-term goals, right? So that's that's important to be. Two, deliver more personalized experience. Rely on automation, integration, back-end integration, right? There's a lot of back-end systems that you have, and the data is out there that we don't leverage today. So add those integration points. You know, add more intelligence to your existing contact center. Reduce the customer churn. So this is a most common thing that we noticed in when we call our uh, to get service or, or, or per, place an order. You, you get sent from one place to the other. So the churn needs to be reduced. Make your contact centers as a one-stop shop. Focus on brand loyalty. That's the other thing. So make sure that your customer sticks with your brands, right? They don't leave that. And when the customers are leaving, you know, make sure that you do everything you can to improve that experience. That's, that's going to be uh, key to, to sustain and then really meet the profitability goals that, according to Gardner predictions, by 2022. So I want to touch a little bit about bots, right? And everybody talked about, you know, chat bots, voice bots. A lot of, a lot of customers are on the fence and they don't really feel like it's it, their uh, bots are relevant for business. And I'll kind of simply walk through what's happening there, right? Bots aren't about new technologies, right? We all know 
almost every customer we, we talk to have some sort of a CRM system in the back end, right? Salesforce, ServiceNow, Zendesk, SAP, all of those things. What, what, there's a huge gap w between these CRM systems and how the customers are being served. There's, we're, you know, most customers, uh, I would say about eight to ten, nine, nine of our customers have some sort of a basic screen pop or something that would identify the customers. They don't do more than that. So what's what's happening in the industry right now is really AI and machine learning, uh, natural language processing, they've really matured and there's products and solutions out there that actually could detect real-time voice. For example, grid space is a technology that we've used today. It, it really uh, detects real-time voice. It, it integrates into your backend systems to really understand what the customer is looking for, right? They have this term in the industry called customer intent. No matter which channel you come through, the goal is to really understand and predict the customer intent. And there's a lot of algorithms that are being written and technologies have maturing almost every day. Voicea is another solution that we've uh, we we read a lot about Cisco recently acquired them, and they are going to be embedding that solution as part of the Cisco uh, Contact Center platform. We all know Google AI and IBM Watson and Amazon Lex. So these are like the key players, and there's a bunch of other players out there that really provide that AI and machine learning capabilities uh, to to voice, chat, SMS, you know, anything and everything. The reason, and the other thing that to keep, to understand is really provide that unified experience across different channels, right? Leveraging these technologies to extract the data from your CRM systems to, to provide that consistent experience. So we talked about bots for customers, right? So most often we tend to ignore what can bots do for employees, your back office workers, right? There's a lot of use cases that we, we, we evaluate on a daily basis, right? Things like, for example, simple text and voice features for faster onboarding for new employees, right? You know, system updates, communications, information retrieval, you know, SMS alerts, right? Hey, there's a system outage that's coming up, so people can subscribe to an SMS system or say, hey, let me know when my email's down. Let me know when my time reporting system is down, things like that. And we've seen use cases where Customers deployed chat bots where employees can ask, hey, how do I report my, where's my time reporting tool? How do I report my HR benefits? How do I change this? A lot of times, you know, there's an intranet portal. People go there, click, through, you know, go through five or ten clicks before they can get, get to what they need. But you can really deploy a bot to really simplify that. And then there's a couple of uh, other things that can be done using bots, things like, real-time customer, cross-functional team management requests, approval flows. A lot of these things could be automated through bots. And then you, you've got data-driven insights from team members, right? So the, the bots give you the ability to identify revenue opportunities, right? In, when you would say you have an employee that's answering a bunch of emails and they're responding to customer requests, even though it's not a contact center, bots can actually scan the content and identify revenue opportunities. We have a poll question here. Would you rather interact with a bot for basic transactions such as password resets, account balances, etc.? Answers are yes or no. We've got a hundred percent. That's that's a record. So that's so that seems to be the common theme, and we're we're noticing that a lot. Why would I have to call a person and speak with a person, or, or contact somebody if all I'm looking for is checking my balance or or my flight arrival information, for example? I can just send a message to my airline company and say, Hey, what time does my flight arrive? Here's my flight number. Why do I have to talk to somebody? Why do I have to go to a website? So those are really some some really strong use cases there. So if you're considering uh, uh, digital me media channels for your customer service strategy, what are the channels that are you considering? 
choices are, you know, the, you can pick any number of choices, SMS, web chat, social media, email, not applicable. Quite interesting. So we have 50% that responded to a web chat and social media 50%, email 50%, and not applicable 50%. Surprisingly, 0% SMS. So that's 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 an interesting observation, which which kind of contradicts what we've been looking at the industry and a lot of uh, there's there's a lot of companies that are actually wanting to enable SMS to their solution. So that's that's an interesting observation. So let's, that's something we've got to think through, right? Today, uh, there's a use case that's coming up very shortly, but I think, you know, SMS is is, is important, but I, it's also a key to a lot of customers. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm kind of surprised to see that stat. That's a very interesting uh, stat there. So digitization era. So what is digitization, right? So digitization means everything that we use and consume today is being digitized. Our moods, our sentiments, uh, I'm going to a vacation. You know, you can thank the social media for that, but our, our desires, our, our shopping, you know, our, the habits and our habituary things, a lot of things, these things are digitized and stored somewhere out there, right? So most of companies, are they don't know what to do with this data but the data data farms are being built and stored you know, you know terabytes and terabytes of data is being stored out there no one really is using or or even effectively know how to use this right use the data data is your strength one of the key point i would like to make is um mark benioff from salesforce you know famously quotes speed is a new currency of business right now what, did, what what does that mean so by definition speed is important to serve your customers providing an accurate service with uh, with with a speed or expedient nature is critical to any business and the success of that business the next uh, next one is uh, the technology disruption is more rapid than ever so what what is technology disruption right we've seen companies like uber lyft airbnb these are the companies that that no one knew that existed until recently but now they're bigger bigger and stronger than ever the reason is they're they're leveraging technology disruptors to disrupt the industry and there's a use case that, that you know about uber that we'll talk about in a minute but really it, the reason i want to uh, make note of that is really they're, they're taking advantage of the modern technologies to really disrupt the industry. And how are they doing that, right? APIs. API is a new standard. When you are an IT executive or, or a business owner and you're considering a new solution or a product, make sure that these products or solutions have APIs. Without an API, without the ability to integrate with uh, your, your systems, those products, you know, they don't they don't have a place in today's world. They, you know, we, we need to be really looking at API. API is a new standard. Any product and solutions that we that are out there, that the modern ones have some form of an API support. So the next topic is really CPaaS, right? What is CPaaS? Communication platform as a service. Right, so there's there's a lot of vendors out there that produce uh, that, that have uh, CPaaS solutions. Right, it's a cloud-based platform that exposes API. Why is it, why is it CPaaS important? Right, CPaaS really enables uh, communications to your existing apps. We talked about making your apps smarter. That's that's where CPaaS comes into play. Right, digital channel enablement. You can add web chat. You can add SMS capabilities. Those are the kinds of things that you could really m make happen with CPaaS in a relatively short order of time. So I want to break down the CPaaS and what are the, the kind of possibilities that you have out there from a channel standpoint of view, right? You've got SMS, chat, voice, 
there's two-factor authentications most of us have either seen or experienced where you send a token information through your um, SMS, SIP trunking, toll-free numbers, right? These are your traditional channels, and you've got the social media side of the house, too, where you, you, you have Facebook, WhatsApp, Slack. These are all considered as inbound channels or outbound channels where you interact with your customers, right? And you've got AI and ML capabilities. You don't have to forklift your platform to just to add an AI, for instance, right? You can really leverage the CPaaS platform to add intelligence to a subcomponent of your contact center. So I've got a use case for a customer where they 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 want a post call survey. They've got a big uh, aging PBX system that they've got an IVR and everything, but they don't have a way to add a uh, a post call survey. So we used a CPaaS solution to deploy a post call survey relatively easy you know, within a matter of weeks. These these are the kind of capabilities that you can really take advantage. So I've got a couple of um, uh, use user success stories. I know there's a few people from other city uh, departments. Um, uh, so one of the things is Philadelphia Police Department, right? So there is a customer success story where they used the Twilio as a CPaaS platform to enable a an anonymous uh, tip line, right? An SMS-based tip line. You know, in my city where I live, they don't have a tip line. We have to really pick up the phone and call. But once they've added it, so what they've done is they've enabled a, an anonymous and secure response uh, to the sender, right, about, a, you know, someone watched uh, a, a suspicious activity, something like that. So how they've enabled is they've created a short code number. We call it, it's a five-digit number. Most, most of uh, enterprises and companies can actually get and purchase a number from Twilio or other sources. They've deployed this tip line in a very expedient manner, right? In a matter of weeks, they have this tip line up and running where uh, residents can send messages to the tip line if they've noticed suspicion act, suspicious activities, right? Things like theft, gun, gun, guns, etc. They've even added a keyword detection within these messages, right? When someone detects guns, bombs, stuff like that, they automatically send a group message out to the law enforcement officials, right? And then they didn't stop there. They even increased that to an MMS capabilities, right? They've enabled this number to enable, you know, MMS, right? You can take a picture of a suspicious vehicle sitting on the, on the wrong side of the road. You take a picture and send it over. You send the instructions. So this really enabled the, the, the local police department to kind of uh, create a, a level of security to the residents and empower them to really be engaged in, in, in the safety of their community. And then Uber is is a classic story, right? I mean, the reason I put Uber out there is that Uber uses Twilio as their communication platform, and most of us either used or you know or will use Uber in the future. Uh, Uber you leverages Twilio for all of their SMS alerts, right? When your Uber is arriving or close by, you, you'll get an SMS alert. They've leveraged um, Twilio, but the way they do that is it's pretty intelligent on how it's done. Not just Uber, Lyft, Curb, all of these platforms use Twilio as a platform. They they use what they call the number proxy, right? When an Uber driver sends a message to your the rider, their number is masked from the rider, and the rider receives that text message or a voice call from a a a, a number that's different from both of them. Twilio on the fly reserves the number for the rider and the, and the driver. So when the driver sends a message to the rider, the rider gets a text message from a number, and then the rider responds back to that text message, and then the message goes to the driver, right? No two parties see their own number privacy protected. They call them voice proxying. And then they do it so intelligently that these numbers are kept alive for us, I believe it's four hours. So there's you know, in my real life, in my you know, you know, about a few months ago, I was traveling with a team of mine, and uh, one of the one of the gentlemen with my team forgot a bag in the Uber. So we, after the ride, we were at the airport. We called Uber on the app. We called the the driver, and the driver answers. I don't have to go through a call center. I don't have to go through anyone. That's how you do it. The the proxying and allows that relationship between the rider and the driver up to a certain limit where they can talk to each other about 
lost items and forgotten things. So same thing with the notifications, right? You know, it really enabled Uber to kind of make that really positive experience and grow in the business. That's, that's a classic. I couldn't have done that with my taxi cab company before. You know, if I lost something in my cab, I probably have to call a lost and found and probably wait for a few days for my items to be returned. But in my case, the Uber driver turned around at the airport, came right back, and then dropped off the bag. So th that's where really consider, you know, what I recommend our, my customers is really leverage this, these technologies. They're out there. They're fully matured. You know, millions of transactions are, that are already happening uh, with some of these other um, companies. That said, I'll kind of leave it open. It's about 30, uh, 35 minutes to the hour. I want to leave it open for questions and answers, and I will uh, answer as much as I can. Hey Pindar, I've got a, I've got a quick one for you. Um, you know, just kind of listening to the presentation. So we we often you know find that a lot of our customers, as you alluded to in the presentation, have existing you know contact centers in place that aren't necessarily omni-channel enabled today. And I'm just I come kind of curious from your perspective. You know what you know if they're looking to add additional functionality. So whether in the CPaaS space or you know something like. Uh, um, you know, uh, integrated chat with WhatsApp. You know, what what are what are some of the things that they that they should take into account? You know, in terms of how they might go about that, knowing knowing that they're going to have to integrate with uh, an existing system in some way, shape, or form. Good question. Thanks, Jason. So, if if you've got a contact center that uh, traditionally voice, and we want to add a little bit of a digital uh, channel enablement, there's there's a bunch of choices. Right. First, I would look at your customer base and what's you know. What's the adapt? You know, everybody thinks WhatsApp or or even SMS might be relevant for your customer base. What I would look, you know, recommend is look at the customer base, make sure that this 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 channel or this digital channel is is the right channel for that customer, and then and then I, from there I, I kind of go into the technology, see what's capable. Most likely there's going to be some sort of a P, you know, CPaaS solution that would allow that, and most CPaaS solutions integrate with your on-prems relatively easy. The challenges you would run into is unified queues, where you would, you know, where your agents are receiving calls from a an on-prem solution or your traditional PBX versus a CPaaS. So those are the kind of challenges that you would run into. We'll just have to work through the technology roadmap on how we can bridge that. But if on an omni-channel digital experience, most likely you you are looking at some sort of a uh, a, a a newer platform or newer solution to make that happen if you want to make that channel part of your contact center. I guess a, a follow-on to that question, and I, I wanted to make sure we mentioned this because uh, we got quite a few comments from people in the Q&A. It, it sounded like there was an issue with ON24 on one of the surveys, so quite a few people actually did select SMS as, as well as some of the other uh, you know, forms of communication, so I just want to call out there, you know, call that out for the audience. Um, but really, you know, the, the follow-on question to that was, you know, when when customers are, you know, when organizations are looking at, you know, these, you know, these specific technologies, you know, what are what are some of the barriers to adoption and really driving some of these solutions forward, right? So you talk about, you know, earlier you asked the question, on, hey, do you have your own applications, you know, on a mobile device that get pushed out there and those sorts of things? But, you know, culturally speaking, what are what are some, of, you know, culturally speaking, or even from a technology perspective, what are what are typically those those big barriers in in getting down? Um, you know, to uh, you know that digital transformation path and actually making meaningful changes to uh, how you know customers are interacting with these organizations. I mean, a couple of things come uh, uh, on top of my mind, right? One thing is security, right? So a lot of customers are worried about, hey, uh, you know, once I bring in the CPaaS solution, that means I'm exposed to the cloud, I'm, all my data is being exposed. That's one of the concerns that I, I hear. And my answer to those is a lot of these CPaaS providers are CI compliant, they're you know ISO certified, they've got all these certifications under the belt. So I, I really kind of uh, advise the customers to just take a hard look at the platform that you're using it, using it for, right? Figure out what their security certifications are. So a CPaaS solution is no different than a, another 
on-prem solutions sitting out there in a different data center. It's really not all that different. And especially, it's not even different with, especially when you look at all the, the cloud CRM solutions that are out there in the cloud. I mean, it's, it's, they're, they're really no different. You, 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 by sending your communication channels through some of these solutions are not that different. And the other consideration I see is really customers are hesitant about the maturity of these platforms, right? You know, a lot of these newer platforms that we see, you know, there, there's a level of customers see them as more infancy. You know, they're not the Avias of the world. They're not the Cisco's of the world. But really, they, that's that's how it's been it's been perceived. Uh, we we tend to really um, get that a lot in our customer customer base. And my my response to that is, there these these technologies, even though they're only about less than 10 years old, but they've they've been very stable and rock solid, and they most of these solutions offer 99.99 percent uptime. So there's the level of assurance, which the traditional manufacturers weren't able to offer that because traditional manufacturer would just say, you buy the software, you install it, and it's on your own. Your 99.99 percent is up to you, right? So I think there's a stark difference there. Oh, great, great answer. Another another question for you. You know, sort of. You know, when we look at a lot of the you know the inherent business value in you know those interactions with customers. I mean, a lot of it is just creating more meaningful dialogue and interaction with customers that's seamless. And you know, obviously, you want people to be courteous if it's a, a voice channel, and you want instant gratification if it's not. You know, I can think about how long I waited on the phone with UPS the other day, and I, I was not super excited. Hopefully. Actually, I should say hopefully no one from UPS is on the call here. Um, but when you think about that, a lot of it comes back to getting all of the data, you know, across disparate systems within the business into the right place. So while you might have a lot of things in the CRM, I know in talking to some organizations that they have other systems that they need to pull data from. I'm just kind of curious from your perspective when you start to look at the larger swaths of solutions from a cloud point of view, how do you bring all of this data back together on the back end, especially if you're leveraging a CPaaS you know, type of solution that exists in the public cloud? So definitely the, the public cloud really enhance, the, the, the one of the things that, that it allows us is the, the, the integration or the API. I think we, I touched on it earlier, the API-based integration, right? And you, Jason, you talked about, you know, I'm, I'm on hold. I talked to UPS for a long time. I'm kind of surprised, but UPS is, been uh, we see that a lot in the uh, in the um, the shipment industry right getting SMS alerts and not even have the need to even contact anyone right that that, that kind of a uh, API based integration that's really su surprising but generally speaking yes CPAS allows you to uh, and integrate with a lot of the uh, these 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 solutions that are either cloud based or or CPAS. And I see a question here from I think Jason, you already answered that, right? Is, is the question that that has is, do you build applications on a raw experience portal for complex financial services, utilities, or healthcare applications, and then integrate with Trilio for basic applications? Your feedback of complex IVR applications is appreciated. So my my answer to that is, healthcare applications are extremely uh, and, uh, critical uh, from a, uh, a HIPAA compliance standpoint for privacy, right? We we do have uh, integrations that we're working with uh, today to enable uh, something like Twilio to enable that backend integration, which your traditional uh, Avaya Experience Portal or even other uh, IVR solutions may not necessarily have that level of uh, intelligence built into it, right? So yes, we can absolutely uh, build ancillary utilities uh, around your healthcare applications, right? For, you know, for basic, uh, the question that was asked is, do you integrate with the Twilio for basic applications? Absolutely you can. I mean, you, you can bring in all the tighter integrations into Experience Portal on the back end for preserving all your HIPAA compliance issues, and you can do the basic uh, IVR treatment in the cloud uh, with Twilio. You can do, you can mix and match, and Twilio allows us to either front the call as an IVR in the front, where you do the initial call triaging, and then you can hand it over to your on-prem uh, IVR infrastructure, or you could have your on-prem infrastructure front the calls, and you can transfer a subset of calls over to Twilio via a SIP, so. And we've done that, yes.
Excellent. It looks like those are the questions we have. I don't know. We can give people just you know another 30 seconds here to see if there's anything else that's out there. Um, so I guess I guess my last quick question for you, Pindar, is you, you know where do you where do you see all this going, right? So I, I think about my interactions, you know, from a end user consumer perspective, and I'm 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 of the the type that I want instant gratification, and I I will take a chat bot all day long if it can get me to the the information I need. Um, where do you where do you see this going in the in the future, right? So there's there's obviously a lot of you know hand waving about AI and ML and and, and chatbots and how they're going to uh, solve world hunger, but um, you know what do you think the reality of the situation is in the the short and long term? So in the short term, uh, I see this a lot of customers taking advantage of some of these deep as media channels. Uh, to instantly, for you know, to your point, right? Instant gratification. You know, you can literally, in a matter of days and weeks, you can enable uh, SMS communication, both inbound and outbound, to your to your solution, right? That's instant gratification. On a long term, I see large enterprises having some form of a hybrid solutions out there. You know, not every, you know, may not 100% of these things may not be in CPaaS, but you'll see some sort of a hybrid for a more mid to small uh, companies, we're seeing a lot of appetite that they just don't want to handle all of this. Everything needs to be in a CPaaS or some sort of a cloud solution where they can instantly enable some of these uh, public-facing media channels, right, if they want to. Today's world, for them to enable a public-facing channel is, is almost like a feat. You have to open up firewalls, you have to open up this and that, you've got to install a bunch of servers. So I think there's a lot of in, in the in the near term, a lot of smaller customers are gravitating towards these uh, C blast uh, platforms. Yeah, great, great answer. I mean, and that's uh, that's kind of what you know what we've been seeing in our conversations with customers. And I think what's been most enlightening and interesting to me, you know, coming more from an infrastructure digital plumber background per se than you know being a contact center um, expert, is the fact that you can very easily. You know, to to the points you've made earlier, take a you know solution that's you know got CPaaS components or other types of cloud-based uh, you know AI and ML, and bring that back into uh, an existing contact center without necessarily having to rip and replace the infrastructure um, that is already in place from a customer point of view. And I think you know the example earlier with um, you know the, the post call survey being able to you know quickly prototype something like that and and get that up and running and you know immediately demonstrating business value and being able to take that back is is something that is extremely interesting as as things progress here. Um, so David, it looks it looks like Absolutely. we're we're good on questions. Yeah, it looks like we're good on questions. So I don't know if we want to go ahead and wrap this thing up now. Yeah, I think yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, thank I you everyone. Elaborate. Oh yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. Thank you. No, no, Pindari, you go ahead. No, it was, uh, th thanks, thanks for uh, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Really, I hope this information is informative on uh, why it's important for the digital channels or even CPaaS for that matter, right? Just reach out to your local rep or re reach back out to me or via LinkedIn or however you want to reach back out. I'll definitely spend more time or even get you some demos on how this is. You know, it's it's really very easy for us to put together a quick demo where if you want to look at how something would look like, conceptualize it. We're happy to do that. Go ahead, Dave. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining today's session of Carousel's monthly Always On virtual series. Uh, shortly after we wrap, a survey window will pop up requesting your input on today's session as well as your interest on future topics. As a thank you for taking the time to complete it, we will send you a Starbucks gift card so your next cup of joe is on us. Please note that there will be no Always On session for the month of January. The Always On virtual series will continue in February of 2020. Uh, thank you again, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, happy holidays.